Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this afternoon, I want to do a kind of preliminary review of what happened in Region 1 before I move on to some other issues. Now, in Region 1, 45 out of the 89 ballot boxes that were count can be clearly linked to the illegalities and electoral fraud we are talking about. These four out of five boxes account for 4,673 votes. And notice I'm not saying valid votes, which constitute 39%. Out of the, twin, out of the 89 ballot boxes, 26 polling books could not be found. What that means is that, in large measure, you could not verify what happened because the polling book, which is the record or the Bible of an election, 26 of them were missing. And those 26 boxes amounted to 2,553 votes. In addition, six sorry 50 certificates of employment were issued and i want to explain certificate of employment if you're working in an area that you aren't living in gcom issues certificate of employment now 50 were issued but only three were found in the boxes what that means is there a, as a high probability that 47 persons voted who weren't entitled to vote. Because if you were entitled and you had a certificate of employment, that should have been in the box. They are not there. What it says essentially, 47 of them are missing. We also had one situation in which the only thing in the box was the OLE, nothing else to verify. I think that was box 1045. 30 oaths of identity were missing from boxes 1046, 1055, 1059, 1073. And I, sorry, I can't decide for the other one. Compliments of my poor handwriting. Two persons voted with IDs that were not collected. And that also tells the story. And so far, we have identified and brought to the attention of the Elections Commission a number of people who died and voted, and 49 people who are out of the jurisdiction that voted. In this said area as well, we continue to see all the trends that suggest illegality and fraud. We need to note that 90% of the certificates of employment were missing. We also did some analysis of the first 10% of the boxes in District 3. What is interesting here is that in that first 10%, 167 persons who voted were out of the jurisdiction. And those lists also had people who died and voted. As we continue the work, we continue to see a trend which I brought to your attention before, where, where the seems to be a calculated attempt not to put the six-digit stamp on votes that are perceived to be in AP and UAFC strongholds. Particularly today, we note that 11 votes in box 4152 for the AP and UAFC had no stamp. Another 
13 that should have been intermixed and be there had no stamp. So what we're seeing here is a clear pattern of not stamping the votes, the, the ballots. And whenever this happens, it is the APNU AFC that is suffering. I should also point out that in the Region 1 recount, 120 votes were regained by the AP and UAFC from envelopes that were PPP envelopes, which is another trend we have seen, where they continue to put the ballots, some of the ballots cast for the AP and UAFC into PPP envelopes. And that is why, why people are saying this process should be quickened. We have to take our time because you have to go through everything since there are these disturbing trends. I want to also point out that apart from these irregularities that we're seeing, I want to point out to you that at the right time, the AP and UAFC will disclose affidavits that we have of people who signed saying the PPP paid them to vote. So all of these things we will deal with as we go along. Those are the initial comments I want to make at this stage. Mr. Martin, just a clarification on the last point you made. You said you have affidavits of um, persons saying that the PPP paid them to vote. Were, were these persons were not on the list or no, we are talking here about people who told us in the field that they were paid to vote PPP, which is an illegality. Once you're paying people for their vote, it's a violation of the law. That's what we're talking about. It has occurred in more than one, but like I said at the right time, we will give details. If I go and tell you it's Region 1, they're going to fly in Region 1 and intimidate all who they know for pay, the people. Where did you acquire this information? After elections day or during this reform process? Well, we knew, we knew of it before that that was the plan before election. But it is obvious that we had to collect it after election because it is only on election day that they voted. So what's preventing you right now from releasing this information? Because... We don't think that it is wise at this stage. There's a point in time. Everything that you do politically has to have timing and strategy. And, and I would say that now is not the best time to release it. So when, in, your, in your opinion, when would be the best time? When the best time comes. Um, after a declaration is made, when this well, I don't know what I don't know what declaration you're talking about. I ran through the order looking to see about this declaration, and I didn't see anything. What impact do you think um, these irregularities that you mentioned would have on the overall recall process here? Well, it depends on how you view impact. If you're viewing impact from the standpoint of the fact that there is there are irregularities. The, the, the whole process is questioned, then it will impact. And I'm saying to you that what we discover, irregularities, etc., are indicative of the fact that it has impacted the process. And impact here is not only quantitative, it's also qualitative. What I have said before, and I reiterate here, it does appear to be a pattern in which POs who have been compromised by the People's Progressive Party took actions that are illegal. And it should be of interest the 26 books, polling books from Region 1, where the ROC is no longer working are not there. So I am suggesting 
that there has been a well-organized, orchestrated approach to compromise people and to ensure that these illegalities occur. That has to be coupled with the fact that the People's Progressive Party fought to keep a bloated list. And one of the best ways of doing what they did was to have at their disposal a bloated list, the thousands who have migrated, thousands who died, and having their possession ID cards that they can do what they want to do. And we had been saying that before the elections. Let us not forget, we were all for house-to-house -house registration. The PPP went to court, and it was blocked. So we ended up with a list that anyone with a minimum common sense would recognize was a bloated list. 600,000 people out of a population of 750,000. And I'm suggesting that the existence of a bloated list produce conditions propitious to irregularities and fraud and brings into question the credibility of the electoral process. That's what I'm saying. Has the coalition made an official um, report slash complaint to the commission about the irregularities you found in Region 1? If you follow the process, Whenever you find an irregularity, you raise it and it is put on the observation report. And they have all been placed on the observation report. We believe at some stage, we believe at some stage, they will have to be reviewed. They will have to be reviewed and a decision will have to be taken on it. A lot of people are here talking about votes tabulated there are votes that are tabulated that are in question and we raise questions about and many of them will have to go before the entire GCOM body to be dealt with are you concerned that the commission which is divided by opposition nominated commissioners and government nominated commissioners are still divided on whether or not the observation report will have an impact Repeat the question, I'm sure I get it. The commissioners are divided on whether or not the observation report will have an impact at the end of the process. We heard what Commissioner Gunrad said and we heard what Commissioner Alexander would have said. A good journalist will go on a good journalist will go and read the order and arrive at their conclusion. No, but are you concerned about this division on the commission? I am, I, am not, I don't know what division you're talking about. Our reading of the order is that these matters will have to be addressed and will impact. But the order doesn't exactly have a provision that states the commission will address these observations in a certain way. It, there's no provision in the order for that. Well, please reread it. Sir, so can you point us to where exactly? In well, I don't have it here, but I read through the order, and there's a point at which it says all of these information will go to the election commission body, and a determination will have to be made at some stage. Uh, Mr. Norton, you've laid blame for these irregularities at the feet of the POs. Um, would you, uh, what would be your response to persons who question what were AFC AFC agents doing at the time? Do you My response to that will be what I said before. APNU AFC agents, I was the counting agent in Region 3, and I've said that I went to POs, and you point these things out to them, and they said to you, in the final analysis, they just decide. And they decided and pay no attention to your objection. I can identify cases of that in Region 3. And I dare, I'm 99% sure operatives in other areas can point to the same thing. And if you follow the rules, the laws governing it, you will know that in the final analysis, that power rests with the PO. And the stamps not being applied when the vote is given the ballot? Who is supposed to apply the stamp? The um, agent. Which agent? The GCOM agent. The presiding, presiding officer. The presiding officer is responsible for placing the stamp. Mr. Norton, um, you mentioned a number of 49 persons 
could have been out of the jurisdiction and appear to have voted. But I'm not sure I heard you mention persons who have died but appear to have voted a number. You have an account? I did say it was preliminary. And we still have people calculating the amount of dead people that voted. Okay. Um, did we expect the party to say put out the serial numbers of those persons who may I appear to have voted and are dead? If we what? Could you perhaps put out the serial numbers of those persons? Our task is to give those numbers to GCOM. Okay. When they are recounting, we call them. They are checked. And then GCOM will take it from there. It's not our responsibility to go putting out numbers. We did our job. Our job was to go into the communities, identify who migrated. When we get in there, we ask the question, could you say if number 62 is ticked off? And if they say yes, number 62 is ticked off, we point out that we have evidence that number 62 was out of the jurisdiction and therefore could not have legally voted. Okay. You said that in this recount process, 120 votes were regained by the coalition in Region 1, yes? That's what I said. Let me repeat what I said. Let me repeat what I said. I said regained from envelopes in which they were placed, PPP envelopes. In other words, I am... I wasn't dealing with all what was regained. I'm saying from our calculations mm -hmm. and from the information we got from our counting agents. Mm -hmm. A lot of these votes were in the, for instance, you, somebody votes APNU, AFC, mm -hmm. but it play, was placed in the PPP envelope and counted as PPP. Okay. It, the process of reclaiming that is somewhere in the tune of 120. All right, so my question, I noticed that in the declaration for the general election, this is the previous declaration, APNU would have had about 7,905 votes, and for the recount it has 7,909. I would, expe would have expected to see a corresponding increase in the number of votes gained in the recount when the difference is only four. Could you account for that? I, I don't understand the question. Okay. 7,905 votes were gained in the general election in Region 1 by mm -hmm. APNUFC. In the recount, that was 7,909. That is an increase of four votes. But you're saying the coalition gained 120 votes in total. When we do the calculation, I don't know where you get your mathematics from, but when we did the calculation, our votes increased by 120. For both the general and regional elections? I'm focusing on the general. I don't want to say the regional. I don't know what it is for the regional because the focus was on the regional. And there was an increase. There was an increase of four votes in the general election. Based on the population the, the information we have suggests that it's increased by 120. Have you looked at GCOM's population? No, I haven't. Uh, can you confirm if... Um, well, it's, it's, it, our data would have come from the tabulations of GCOM because it is this... Uh, the statement of recount we are using. Okay. Can you uh, confirm mm -hmm. if the certification of the results for District 1 is already in place? And what's what's the APNU, off on that, um, I don't know that there could be any certification of any results at this stage. We have a number of questions to tarries, and we believe that they have to be revisited and dealt with before you can talk about anything like a declaration. Not a declaration. Not a certification document. Which is document different. I don't, I don't think, I don't think we have certified any document. Uh, there are reports that each contesting party would have received prints up, printouts of the matrix to verify and then sign a certification of the results for region one. You can receive it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't follow that you agree and you sign. Okay. At so no the, stage did we. Did the coalition sign this? Not to my knowledge. Do you intend to sign it? Well, uh, that is a question that... It's difficult to answer because one will have to look at the circumstances surrounding it. And if we are dissatisfied, we wouldn't. So the question of intention has to be linked to the question of credibility. And we are questioning the credibility of the entire process in region. One, you're talking about votes that were garnered with 26 missing uh, polling books, among others. So, I don't see us as seeing it as credible. 
and having to sign anything at this stage. What would you want to see done for you to be comfortable and affix your signature to the tabulation for this reason? That seems axiomatic to me. The process must have been credible. If it is not credible, then... So there is no scenario in which you will affix a signature certifying reason one? No, I didn't say that. I don't know how you arrive at that logic. I'm asking. No. Go back what you're asking. Is there a scenario in which you will affix a signature certifying the results of region one and what is that but i answer that i said a signature is dependent on us accepting that it is credible so far its credibility is in question so what can she come do to convince you that it was credible is it a question of convincing me or is it a question of ensuring that the process is credible so that based on the credibility one can agree Okay, can GCOM do anything to rectify the credibility issues? You have to ask GCOM then. What role would you like to see? Is there anything you, your party specifically wants out of this? What the party wanted out of it is essentially a recount that established that all the votes were there legally and therefore credible. Until we are satisfied that that happened and it doesn't appear as there's any credibility in the process at this stage. There has been a report uh, that 81% of the disciplined services vote in a particular uh, diamond area um, what did not have the six digits stamp. Uh, can you please speak on that? Well, we have some in information emerging that at some other point uh, where the discipline services votes were mixed. There were a lot that weren't stamped and therefore the AP and UAFC would have lost because when you check those that weren't stamped they were the people who vote for the AP and UAFC how many votes are we talking about? I don't want to speculate I want to wait until they complete the process and just like I did with region 1 I will do it region 4 how has the commission dealt with those votes? like I said to you all of these objections will be made and then it will go to the commission the commission will have to deal with it in the future I don't think they're dealing with it right now. But so far, those votes would have been invalid. They are recorded as invalid. We have made our protests and pointed out that there seems to be a pattern in which votes for AP and U plus AFC are not being stamped deliberately. And so it's not just an issue of them not being stamped. I can tell you of an issue. At Ogle, the presiding officer, by some error, didn't stamp some and then returned after to the AP and UAFC agents to ask that they be stamped. And we couldn't agree with that. In this, these cases we are talking about, it appears a deliberate strategy to not stamp AP and UAFC votes so that they go as rejected votes. Now, Mr. Norton, you mentioned one situation where the only thing found in the box, I think you said it was 1045, is the OLE and perhaps what the ballots. I said the ballots alone were there. There was no OLE, nothing else. So, in other words, if you go in a box and it has only the ballots, you can check to see who are ticked off that, were, that voted because there's no OLE. You can't know who vote by way of affidavit. You can't know who vote with certificate of employment. It could be just be a case where the ballots were put there and you either accept it or question it. In this case, it is questioned. Now this box was just counted as every other box. I know for sure that we have made an objection because we have objected to all those in which there are no polling book. Look, the Bible of an election or the holy book of an election from whichever religion you emanate is the polling book and when the polling book isn't there you are creating the conditions for fraud okay. 
Does the coalition have like a threshold of not of irregularities before uh, the vote in a particular area could be uh, deemed not credible? Well, I said there are two categories of illegality. One is quantitative, who are you talking about? The other one is qualitative. How do you put a quantity on the people who are allowed to vote twice, which you can't discern from a ballot recount? Don't forget, you know, the PPP was pushing for a ballot recount. We wanted more than that. And even with that, there are many areas of fraud you can't pick up. So qualitatively, you will know there is a high level of fraud. Quantitatively, you might not be able to put a number. And so one has to look at both the quantitative and qualitative aspects of the illegality to determine the extent to which the process has been compromised. And there's a quantitative number running? I, would I wouldn't put a quantitative number. Mr. Norton, um, perhaps when you heard, he has summed up how many people who died and appear to have voted. Could, could you tell us that total? I think I answered that before you. Uh, no, unless you said you're that they were still summing up. You said the first, you said mm -hmm. four to nine out of the jurisdiction appear to have voted. But you didn't give a number for. I people. did say that I will get a number at some stage oh, when they finish okay. the process. Thank you. Sorry. Mind you, one dead person voted is an illegality. Let me remind you in this country that one of the biggest battles fought over the years is over dead people voting. And so, I don't know if it is the quantity alone that matters. It's a violation of law and it, it makes the process questionable. I want to also point out that I have heard a lot of people call for this person to be sanctioned because of illegality. But as we point out these illegalities, people are silent on those people who should be sanctioned for doing some of the things that were done in this election. Well, GCOM commissioners have actually spoken about the process they want to take up to blacklist deviants and incompetent officials. Well, you see, you might say incompetent. Incompetence and deliberate illegality are two different things. Well, they said deviant or incompetent. Well, it could be deviant, it could be incompetent, it could be illegal, it could be fraudulent. You have to work out the categories. What I do know is that there's a narrative being pushed to suggest it was the mistakes of the POs so that they can hide the fact that there was a coordinated approach to compromising presiding officers in these last elections. Okay then, thank you. Good evening, viewers. There you just had the an executive member of the People's National Congress Reform, the largest party in the APN USD coalition, Mr. Aubrey Norton. Um, basically speaking, uh, giving an update about what took place today in the Artichon Conference Center. There are major issues, he said, that the APN UFC has with the tabulation and the votes of District 1, which is Region 1. Uh, we know that all of the ballot boxes for Region 1 um, have been counted, 99 ballot boxes have been counted, including that one that was soaked and what mr norton said is that they are major irregularities that were found with those ballot boxes he said i'm looking at my phone because i was taking notes when he was talking he said there are 45 ballot boxes that could be linked to electoral fraud those were his exact words he said uh, 26 polling books could not be found in total for the 99 ballot boxes in Region 1. Now, region all ballot boxes should have a polling book, and he said that there are 26 polling books that are missing. And he actually said that in some ballot boxes, there were 50 certificates of employment were issued, and um, only three were found. And he said the APNU AFC also found 47 persons who were found to have voted in the elections who were not entitled to vote and he said one ballot box only had the official list of electors there were no polling books there were no other documents there were no envelopes and he said what the um 
what the statements of recount actually found is that the AP and UAFC gained 120 more votes because they found that votes that were marked for the AP and UAFC were put in the PPP envelopes. So it was counted as, as PPP votes. He said though over 120 of those were found. And he is accusing GCOM of Ill Ill illegality and electoral fraud. And now what happened today is there, there are... There, the tabulations for Region 1 has been completed. And after the tabulation is completed, there has to be the certification of the results for District 1 to be in place. And the certification of District 1 would have the results from the, from the recount. And each contesting party has received the printouts of the matrix to verify and then sign the, certifi the, certif the certification document. Sorry. So each party would have to sign that certification document that explains or that states exactly how many votes each party would have gotten at the elections. Now, Mr. Norton said that the AP and UAFC will not sign that certification document. And that certification document was put in place today. Some parties would have signed it, but he said the AP and UAFC will not sign that certification document because the credibility of District 1 is, is now into question and they will not sign that document until GCOM can address the credibility issues because of allegations he made about electoral fraud. He also claimed that the AP and UAFC have in their, their possession affidavits um, that people said the PPP paid them to vote for that party. He said the, the coalition again will not release those affidavits and he doesn't know when they will release it um, but this is the evidence the, the AP and UAFC have in their possession and not releasing it he said um, when asked when is a good time do they think they will be able to release it he could not say but he said um, it's illegal for any party to pay anyone to vote for them. Um, he also claimed that there are irregularities found in District 3, he claimed that 10% of the recount that is happening right now, um, 49 persons voted who are not in, in the country um, on Elections Day. So he said the AP and UFC is also finding irregularities in District 3. So at this point in time, the AP and UFC will not sign on to the certification document for the results of the recount for District 1. And he says it's up to GCOM now to really address those concerns and to decide the way forward. Um, and that's really the update that we have for you so far. We have not spoken to any other party agent since then, no one, no one has really come outside to the media tent today to address members of the media to see what's really happening. But we are still camp outside, awaiting the outcome of today's proceedings. Uh, we're still going to bring you live updates outside the Artichon Conference Center. I am Fariza Hanif reporting for the newsroom. Please stay tuned to the newsroom.